Okay, so now we can start drawing our skeleton in, in proportion. So you read that the human body is about eight heads tall. So what that means is if we took the head off and use that as a measurement, we could probably measure it within that space eight times. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces. What a great coincidence. All right. So what we're going to do, we're eventually going to draw a more detailed skeleton, but to start out, just to put it in proportion, we're going to use some nice, simplified, easy shapes. We're going to draw very lightly, um, just so that we can get it into proportion, and then you can come on top of that and fix all those lines and make them more detailed, okay? So starting with the head, what shape could we use for the head? Um, probably not a circle, unless, you know, you're a cartoon. How about like an egg shape? So I'm just gonna lightly sketch it in, not worrying too much about value, um, about detail, okay? Now I'm gonna use up the whole space because that's one head tall, right? Okay, now what does the head sit on? Is it straight connected to the shoulders or is there something there? Oh well, yeah, hopefully. There's a neck, so let's definitely take that into consideration. I wanna add the neck, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's see. What sits in the exact middle of the body? Do you guys know? If you fold in half, what's right in the middle? It's actually your pelvis. So I'm gonna draw the pelvis, and as a simplified shape, I'm gonna draw it kind of like, like this. And slightly rounded shape. Now you'll notice that <clears throat> a little bit of it is below the middle line, but most of it is above the middle line, okay? Um, again, I'm not gonna worry too much about shape, but one thing that we do need to keep in mind is just, you know, how wide do you go? Well, I wouldn't go further than maybe three heads wide especially with the shoulders. So if we can kind of estimate one, two, and three, don't go out any further than that. And that means with the actual arms, okay? So everything else needs to be kind of contained within that. The pelvis is definitely not gonna be that big, that's crazy. So keep it nice and tight. In fact, let's see. If I was going to draw a line up, might be about half a head out on either side. <clears throat> Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. There you go. Okay, continuing on. Now, let's just go down here. If the whole other half of us is legs, okay, what's in the middle of our legs? Can you guys think? If you bend your legs, which way do they bend and what do they bend from? Well, hopefully they've been from your knees. So let's put two little circles about pelvis apart right here. That represents where our knees are going to go. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we can kind of, well, actually, you know what? Let's put in the rib cage because that's important. Now, a lot of students want to put the, like, make a big rectangle for the rib cage, but that's actually not how it looks. If you look at the pictures that are online, the rib cage is actually kind of small and rounded. So we're gonna draw it coming right off the neck, at right here. And again, I wouldn't go further out than you did with the pelvis. Maybe just a little bit. You can correct all of these things later. Um, and then, let's see. How far down? Probably almost to this line right here. Maybe not quite all the way, but really close. So there's a nice shape for our rib cage. Now what connects our rib cage to the pelvis? More vertebrae. So I would make like a little column, maybe divide that out. But again, detail will come later. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the head, the neck, the rib cage, the vertebra. We have the pelvis and the knee. So why don't we go ahead and connect the dots here. Let's connect the um, 
with the top, the, the pelvis to the knees with the, the um, femurs, okay? Those are the largest bones in our body. And if you look at them, do they come straight down from the pelvis? Look at the picture and you'll see that they actually don't. They stick out from the side and then connect all the way down here. So I'm just gonna do a simple tube shape like that for now. Same on this side. Simple tube shape with a little bit of a extra part right there at the top, okay? Now, second part, actually, you know what? Let's put the feet in because that gives us something to connect. So I think just to simplify the feet, if we imagine them coming straight towards us, I'm gonna go do the flat part underneath and then I'll just do kind of like a little sort of lopsided triangle with no top. So a very bad square. <laughs> okay. And again, you guys will fix that later. Now to connect the dots from here to there, um, this, the bottom part of your leg, does it have just one bone or two? Hmm. Pretty sure it's got two. So I'll make one nice line, just a simple cylinder, and maybe a smaller one on the inside. Same here. thicker tube and then a smaller tube. Now the last part, shoulders and arms. Now what connects up here? Do we just have kind of our shoulders right off of the rib cage or are they a little bit separate? And the backs of the shoulders are actually a little bit separate and we have something called clavicles, these little bones right here that sit right on top of the rib cage. And um, our shoulders kind of sit within those. So don't have your shoulders coming straight out of your rib cage. Bring them out a little bit. Okay, and then these bones, the top part of your arm, it's going to go as far as your elbow. So how far down is your elbow? Well, if you bend your elbow and stick it into your side, you can feel kind of where it is in relation to your rib cage. It's a little bit longer, and it seems to, to kind of elbow you <laughs> no pun intended, kind of sticks you right in between your rib cage and your pelvis, which happens to be right where this lovely line is. So your elbows are going to be right here. Okay, so let's connect the dots. Make just a nice little tube to connect to the elbow. All right, now we have to figure out how far down we go with the hands. So if you stand up and you hold your hands straight down, how far down does that longest finger go? A little bit longer than you might think, okay? It actually goes straight down to your middle thigh, which conveniently enough is right where at this line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some hands. Now, this is where students always kind of freak me out because they will either draw giant hands or they'll draw itty bitty teeny tiny hands. Both of those are a little bit freaky. So let's not do that. Let's just try to keep it normal sized. You can draw something shaped like kind of like a glove. All right, does that feel a little bit more normal? It should only be about the size of the face, right? So that feels about right. Okay. So there's our very simplified hands. And then we just connect with two tubes because this, our forearms are made with two bones, just like our lower legs. The radius and the ulna. Okay, so now you have your skeleton in proportion. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is go back and start fixing all these shapes so that they actually look like reality. Okay, so you can look at a picture online or you can look at my actual skeletons, which I kind of recommend it being better a better idea than going online. But um, whatever you want to do, and you're going to start coming in and putting in more detail. So in the end, I would like to see a lovely proportional skeleton with nice detail and shading and everything. Okay? All right. Good luck. Bye.